Ambina. Hi, by the way. And I will tell you a little bit about the sustainable our ranking in the Netherlands. I'm here on the board of Studenten voor Morgen together with Lucas. Uh, Studenten voor Morgen translated as Students for Tomorrow. Uh, please, the next slide. Um, so, Studenten voor Morgen is um, an organization, a national and international organization, which tries to um, sustainabilize the uh, higher educational system. So we try to impact both universities as well as University of Applied Sciences. And um, one of the ways which we are doing is which we were doing that um, is by networks and projects uh, and one of our projects is the sustainable uh, this year i will um, be partly organizing the sustainable together with flores and Fierle, which you will see in the next slide and then yeah that's us <laughs> and then you can continue to the next slide please um, so I mentioned before that we are part of some networks. We are part of national, both national and international networks. So nationals for um, professional, professional people who are uh, working in the environmental industry, or maybe you know one of our international networks with this, which is Youth and Environment Europe, and of course, Climate Student Movement. Um, please, the next slide. Uh, and we also have some projects such as Sustainable Studies, which is a platform which helps students to or stimulates students to uh, make a choice or make a sustainable choice in what to study. And we have Sustainable Student, which is on the right. And that's just a blog post or a website which uh, people can write articles for. So it's more of a, a lower threshold, uh, but we do try to um, stimulate youth participation in there as well. So now on to the sustainable. Uh, the sustainable is a yearly ranking um, in which we uh, rank 33 uh, higher in higher educational institutions. Uh, we rank them in three different categories, namely um, education, research and policy. And we do this by recruiting certain kind of uh, students, which we call rankers, and these rankers, these fill out uh, a questionnaire, and this questionnaire has 17 questions, and we try to have two rankers on each questions, which gives us about 34 rankers, but sometimes we want um, a backup, so we try to aim for 40 rankers each year. Um, first of all, some of the history of the sustainable. Um, uh, you see here in the middle a picture of the first sustainable we handed out to Maastricht University, a town uh, in the south of the Netherlands. Um, back then it was very different from what it was now because in 2020 um, the sustainable got a, a makeover um, because from 2020 onwards uh, educational uh, institutions they were not voluntarily joining anymore but they were obliged to join. Um, so the 33 biggest uh, educational institutions are now joining each year um, and we and they also um, included the best practices which i will be telling you a little bit about more later and in 2022 that's actually this year we reached another milestone and we're now um, developing the questionnaire again so uh, we try to take it under a loop and we will adjust it accordingly to um, what it asks for now actually so please go to the next slide yes so we i want to take you through our process um, of the sustainable we uh, end the sustainable in the end of at the end of may this year but before that uh, there are five different phases the first phase is just a preparation phase in which we recruit the rankers um, and so for this year, adjust the questionnaire. Then the first phase, um, most of the process actually is similar to um, Jack's ranking, which he told uh, in last presentation, but we don't, uh, or we let the rankers, so we don't, oh, and as well, it's a little bit the same as the, the ranking from the 
the Scandinavian students as well, but um, we let the but let the students rank the institutions. So the first round is to gather information, and they will score the educational institutions on one question. So one from the three categories. So it's either research, um, education, or um, policy. Um, they score these uh, institutions by the documents they find online. Um, and then the second phase is when the educational institutions um, are allowed to respond to it. So they get a set of feedback and then they um, are allowed to submit any other documentation which uh, the rankers might help, which the rankers might not have found it in the first place. Uh, that does, this does mean that sometimes the documents they submit are not for, uh, are not transparent or not for public eye, uh, which is part of the questionnaire as well. So transparency is one of the questions as well. Um, then the third phase um, is on the next slide. Um, the third phase, uh, yes, oh, yes, thank you. The third phase is when the rankers can adjust their scores if they want to. They can see the additional documents the educational institutions have admitted, and then, um, yeah, higher or lower. Uh, most of the times it's higher the scores, sometimes the scores stay the same, but it's almost never that the scores get lower. And then the fourth phase is for the educational institutions to check, uh, to do a final check, whether they, they are not allowed to give any more feedback, but they are allowed to see their, their own scores. And then the final phase is um, where the most of the work is for us. We are uh, analyzing the data and then writing the uh, benchmark reports and the final report of the sustainable. And then we have um, an awarding ceremony at the end of May, um, which is always very celebratory and something to look out for. Um, then uh, this is how the ranking looks. Uh, I'm sorry it's in Dutch, but I translated the legend for you on the left hand side. Um, most of the points um, at each uh, a category, so the green one, the yellow one, and the blue one have uh, 110 points, and then there can be scored bonus points when an educational institution submit any best practices or when they um, make sure that some of their students become rankers, because last year was a struggle when recruiting rankers. Um, and you can see that uh, the points vary and also um, most of the educational institutions are very close to the points they get. And as you can see, the, the, the education institution with the least amount of points is um, scoring very badly. But that's also um, one of the good things, because if we go to the next slide, we can see the impact that um, the sustainable has made. And um, the last, the lowest scoring education institution was um, Christelijke Hogeschool Ede, which is the University of Applied Sciences in uh, a town nearby. And because they have been scoring so low for the past few years, they um, created a, a green office. This is one of the education institutions in which that happened, which is actually really cool to know because because of our ranking, because of the sustainable, um, unis are um, establishing green offices or unis are um, creating more jobs such as a sustainability coordinator in one of the universities of applied sciences in Arnhem and Nijmegen. Um, this actually is a direct impact of the sustainable because they know they've been scoring low for the past years and when they, they, they want to score higher, they do things like that. And we also try to let the unis change any policies. Um, but that's a, a harder goal to reach since the policies of universities only change once every four years. But they when they are changed, uh, they keep some of the sustainables impact and some of the sustainables comments definitely in mind, which is a good thing. Um, then I would like to briefly touch upon the uh, best practices, um, which is on the next slide. Yes, uh, so the best, uh, the universities are allowed to um, submit three best practices per round, and one of them can be ranked um, 
according to the rest of the best practices. It's really cool to see what the best practices are from each university. Um, and they, we have about eight different categories, three of which are education, products and funds and nutrition. Um, and the better the best practices, the higher the points for the sustainable. Um, I guess this was a brief introduction of the sustainable. And if you have any questions, I'm here at the Q&A session. So feel free to put them in the chat or to email me if you have any other questions. Thank you.